surely you want to drink every single beer in existence as cold as possible. Tell me, am I wrong? You're wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I said you're wrong. Yeah. You kind of are. Well, no, you definitely are. But I have to admit right up front that there is an element of personal taste here. Mm. Like the, the rules that I'm about to give you uh, and the experiments we're about to do shouldn't point to the fact that you should only drink these beers at certain temperatures. Like some people just prefer their beer a bit warmer, prefer their beer a bit cooler. And it's totally up to you. All beer rules should be it's like how you want to enjoy it it's your goddamn yeah. beer right yeah, right right it's my beer Joy. It's, yeah i'll yeah. drink it how i want to so i guess this video is about persuading that you might enjoy it more if we follow these certain rules but you don't necessarily have to but there's a ton of science that we can dig into yeah, yeah. and we're going to dig into a lot of the pseudo side of it right now i understand it's complicated enough for you to have made a diagram about this but are there any sort of simple rules that we can start sort of start running with here yeah the one that's always bandied about on the internet is abv plus two right so you look at the strength of the beer and yeah. you add two centigrade to that okay so if we're drinking like an eight percent beer add two degrees centigrade to it so you drink it at 10 degrees c pretty much and that works pretty well as a general rule okay. but as we get into the science of it you're going to see that there's lots of reasons why that will fundamentally mess you up with certain beers yes even the systems that i've got in place will fundamentally mess you up with some with some beers <laughs> so let's let's dig into the, like, the science of, of our palate and why temperature actually matters mm. so the really simple rule to remember is that the colder something is the less it's going to taste yep. and the less flavor it's going to have those are two separate things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taste is what's on your tongue, so it's sweet, salt, umami, sourness, bitterness. Flavor is all those wonderful aromas and stuff that together you create basically how you taste. So yeah. the colder something is, the less it's going to taste, the less potentially bitterness, sourness, sweetness, all of that kind of stuff. The other thing is that the colder it is, the less flavor. Right. right? Yeah, so yeah. basically, if something's cold, the thermodynamics dictates that the, the, the actual sort of molecules will be less like to break off exactly They're less volatile less volatile they've got less sort of energy to sort of break away from things almost. exactly that yeah so you're going to get less aroma less flavor as a result of that because they're not popping off in your face yeah. which is why we swill beer before we taste it we're is getting it? the aromas out so that's like the really simple thing and all of the rules that we're going to come up with come off of that simple demonstrable scientific fact 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 so there are some exceptions to this rule. And actually, I dive into it in my book, A Year in Beer, uh, in a whole chapter about fireside beers and nice why you need to pick your beers. Thanks, man. So your tongue is covered in taste buds, right? But it's not quite as simple as that. We have different connectors going to our brains and all this kind of stuff, and they can be affected by temperature. So actually, bitterness, mm. sweetness, and umami are more impacted by temperature mm. than sourness and saltiness. Right? Wow. So if you think about ice cream, it's a great example. When you eat ice cream frozen, it's, uh, if not balanced, it, it's sweet, it's delicious, it's designed to be at that temperature, right? It's majestic. It, it's, it's majestic ice cream. If you warm it up, yes. for most people, probably not you, it gets too sweet. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's because they, they know that the colder something gets, the less you're going to taste that yes. sweetness. Yeah, so yeah, they have yeah. to over they amp it, it up. when it's cold. Exactly that. Got you. And the same can be true for bitterness. And the same can be true for umami kind of flavors. So right. if you serve your steak at a nice warm temperature, you're going to get all of that lovely umami, Maillard, crispy, bready mm -hmm. deliciousness. If you serve your steak cold, you're going to get less of that. Nobody wants cold steak. Nobody wants cold steak. But then we get to saltiness and we get to sourness. Now, these two have different pathways to the brain and they're not as uh, affected by temperature. So as the temperature gets warmer, actually the sourness isn't necessarily going to increase. Um, and nor is the saltiness. Yeah, I know certainly I've taken a cold water dunk in the ocean and it is incredibly salty still. Doesn't matter how cold it is, it's salty. <laughs> it's still though. really damn salty. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. The bitterness is kind of like a halfway house. It's a bit somewhere in the middle. Right. Yeah. And so, so, do you think that's because bitterness in our ancient brain was sort of like an indicator of poison? I think that's probably it. So, yeah, even though it's sort of related in the way they translate to our brains as, as sweetness, we always have to taste bitterness. Yeah. Bitterness is poison to humanity. It's why we struggle to 
you know, drink things or eat things that are bitter. When we're young, our brains are always like, what? No. And we have to kind of get over that. Do you think also it's why, so I don't like warm coffee, but I like an iced coffee because the sort of bitterness comes down. It'll be a little bit mellowed. Yeah. I think yeah. that probably is part of it. But it that is still because all of those ice lights are laden with sugar. Yeah, sugar. Yeah, sugar. <laughs> so Johnny, I think I get a, a vague sort of understanding of the science behind it now. How do I apply it in practice? Yeah, great question. So I've laid out seven beers that should in theory be served at separate temperatures. I've selected those temperatures and to explain my thinking here's my diagram wow <laughs> so so there's a couple of different questions that you need to ask yourself when you're working out what temperature to serve your beer and the first most important question is is it a lager is it a lager why why is it a lager why is that the first question well, so if we look at those those scientific facts that we we now know about yes. we need to think about what do we want from a lager we want a balance of sweetness and bitterness yeah. we want it to be clean fresh and like beautiful and first quenching as possible and that's crispy. crispy you want a crispy boy right yeah exactly that means cold i know exactly that means that. cold johnny yeah. why why is a lager particularly suited to be cold these beers are actually fermented cold in the cold. so they're used yeah. to that already so there is a kind of they need to be cold but also because we want really clean flavors and we know that flavors are accentuated the warmer they are then we should serve you know, muted things where we're not looking for nuance and subtleties, we're looking for ultimate refreshment, we serve it cold. So a lager should be stored and then served probably around four degrees. So once we've answered that first question, is it a lager? If it is, yes, we serve it at about four degrees. Got it. With some exceptions we'll get into. If it's a no, if it's an ale, then we need to look at the other kind of taste compounds that we might be looking for. So we need to ask, is it malty? Yes. Is it hoppy? Yes. Or is it sour? Right, okay, so we can sort of break down the sort of family food groups, as it were, yeah. into those three constituent parts. So if it's multi-forward, there's another little question to ask yourself, and that's the strength, right? So then we get back to almost to that ABV plus two kind of thing. So, yeah. so my rule is pretty much, if it's less than 6%, yes. then I'd probably serve it at a, about 10 degrees. So really? like a cold cellar temperature. Wow. So things like bitters, um, uh, English IPAs, stuff yes. like that, you know, stuff where serving at that temperature is going to bring out nuance in those hops, it's going to bring out depth in that malt, the caramel, the bread, the raisin, all that kind of stuff. That does better at 10 degrees because it's sweet flavours, right? Right, right. So the, even though it's, it's malty, you, you are sort of talking about some some sort of maybe hoppy beers there as well that are in that kind of well not not so much hoppy but to bring out that hoppiness, hoppiness you know yeah. we, we still want some of that it's still got to be balanced and all of this that we're talking about here is finding balance in those beers yeah. and beers can be thrown out of balance if you serve that too warm the bitterness is going to be too much if you serve it too cold you're not going to get any of the malt depth so right. 10 degrees for me is that sweet spot and if it's going to be over six percent that beer then i'd probably nudge it up to 12. wow okay it's quite quite warm comparatively to to sort of drinking a, a cool crispy lager yeah, absolutely absolutely but still cold right you know yeah, brits yeah, get yeah. accused of serving their beer warm this is still colder than the english channel and i don't think anybody's ever jumped in that and gone oh it's a bit warm isn't it <laughs> so like we have to remember this is yeah, still yeah, yeah. properly chilled i guess sort of like in terms of our body and and sort of body temperature blood temperature is way warmer it's, than that 36 37 38 so, so it's still incredibly refreshing exactly thirst quenching exactly. and i think i think all beer should, no beer should be served over 12 in my opinion because a once you get to temperatures over that you're going to start to lose carbonation quite yeah. quickly but b because beer has always been brewed to be drunk in a little bit of volume compared yeah. to say wine or spirits and colder temperatures helps with that as well so a beer like this which is a barrel aged imperial stout i'd serve that at 12. if we go down to here this is my it's a four and a half percent milk stout really malty sweet but you want to serve that uh, what is it it's four and a half percent i'd want to serve that uh, about 10 degrees because it might get too sweet and cloying if we're right. up at 12. Yes. So we've, we've got four, we've got 10, we've got 12, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the multi ones. If it's hoppy, and we're actually going to have a beer finally, oh. if it's hoppy, then pretty much I'd always serve it at six, regardless of the ABV. So right, totally different right, to right, maltiness right. where I pay attention. If it's hot forward, particularly American hot forward, yes. do not serve these beers too warm. So the, the kind of the bitterness of the hops, uh, we've we've said that bitterness is kind of a halfway house, so you can still 
perceive lots of bitterness and exactly and all that. that kind of flavor so, profile at that sort of temperature yeah so if you've got like say um say you've got a red ale and it's an india red ale it's nine percent i'd still serve that at six degrees yes because if you don't you're going to bring out all of the malt and less of the hop and you're going to lose the balance of that beer so you want to suppress some of that rich sweetness and you want to amp up the hoppiness because that's what any of these sort of india style beers are all about mm. so whatever what Ever the ABV, if it's a hot forward style, I wouldn't serve it warmer than six. And actually, if it's a lower ABV one like this, you could serve it at four, like lager temperatures. If you're going to treat it like a lager, i.e. Right. neck a load of it, then serve it a little bit colder. If there's less flavor, it will be easier to drink. So this beer that we're drinking is an 8% uh, double IPA inspired by Pliny. It was part of our documentary we made about hops, um, which was, was uh, sponsored by Siren. And this beer, even though it's 8%, it's got lots of malt character, lots of lovely honey biscuit stuff that's backing it up. I would never serve this warmer than six. If you do, you're gonna throw that beer out of balance. You're gonna get too much bitterness, too much sweetness, and, and essentially just, make it an, a, an entirely different beer almost you know hmm. you need to keep it a little bit clean and that's this should be at six although i get that i was waffling for a while there so apologies oh. i mean it tastes great it's it's just got all the complexity that you'd want hasn't it it's hitting every angle of my mouth i'm yeah. getting I'm getting the bitterness i'm getting the beautiful sort of well, not quite tropical notes, but it, it, it is. There is, you know, there's, there's, there's a, a definite kind of. I mean, this is Simcoe, which can have some kind of tropical notes. So it definitely has that almost juicy fruit thing going on. But it's also got pine and resin and a little bit of dankness, a bit of jamminess going on. A little it's... bit of jam, which is that that kind of collusion of mm. sweet malt and slightly sticky hops. Yeah. And if you serve that much warmer, that stickiness would get too much. You'd lose the pine, the resin, and you'd be dominated by caramel, sticky tropical fruits, all that kind of stuff. So while this beer warms up to temperatures that we wouldn't want to drink it at, should we have a chat about sourness? Mm. So sourness, as I said, is, is less affected by changes in temperature. Whatever happens, the pH stays the same, yes. and your perception of that pH stays roughly the same as well. I feel like that's a reptilian brain like safety net as well with the sourness there. Uh, uh, <laughs> reptilian. Knows? So with that in mind, um, this one probably more than any Yes. is all about personal taste, right? Okay. So we've got two sours on this bench here. We've got one which, despite being 8%, mm -hmm. uh, it's an apricot peach imperial sour ale from Virginia, Be Virginia Beer Co. Wow. Even though it's 8%, big old beer, um, I would probably serve this pr uh, probably at six. You could even really? serve it at four. Yeah, wow, amazing. I mean, I have dr I've drunk lots of sour very cold, but I've also drunk warm, funky sours. Yeah. Exactly. So this one, you keep it cold because you're not looking for complexity. This is right. a clean sour, right? Clean. So it's uh, okay. lactobacillus. Got it's going to be lots of lemon character and then whatever fruit's been added or a little bit of grain character if it's not been fruited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you want... So it's like the, the refreshing side of a clean sour. Exactly. It's a bit more one-dimensional again, right. a bit like the lagers where it's yeah. like, I'm going to do this one thing. If it's a Hellas, it's going to be drinkable honey. If it's a Czech Pilsner, it's yeah. going to be like pretty much drinkable caramel this one's going to be drinkable peach so the the, the the sort of sourness at this level at that temperature like i said it's bringing out the refreshment factor of the sourness yeah. it's like a lemon tart or something yeah or a, a, a popsicle or a, an icicle or a, whatever lemon, country calls it a lemon sorbet or, like yeah. a palate cleanser exactly almost. that Amazing. exactly and you don't want that warm if you serve this at the same temperature that we might serve this other sour beer yeah um I think it, 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 would, it would bring out the sweetness again. Yeah. So the sweetness would be thrown out of balance because the sweetness is enhanced, but the sourness isn't. So you're throwing it out of balance. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be less crispy, refreshing, tart, desserty. So then we move on to funky sours. So non-clean yeah, sours, yeah. the ones that might have Britannomyces, Pediococcus, other stuff yeah, going on. Really complex. Yeah. Some and of the most complex sort of flavor beers going. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I do think that, yeah, wild ales, are the most complex kind, kinds of beers. Um, now, if you serve those too warm, uh, you know, that's going to be too much. Mm. It's going to be loads of things popping off. The carbonation is going to be coming out too quickly. You're going to end up with quite a flat, slightly undrinkable beer. But if you serve it too cold, you're going to lose all of that wonderful nuance and complexity that mm. has been developing over years in the, in the barrel, the fermented the, the the bottle so i would serve these at around about eight so just a little bit colder than the big multi ones where we're trying to enhance sweetness 
but a little bit warmer than the hoppy beers where you know they're still kind of one dimensional we're still just trying to get hop 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 yes. these ones we want a bit of everything right right yeah yeah it's a smorgasbord of flavors and tastes going on in these yeah so to summarize super quickly crash course in what temperature to serve your beer four degrees for lagers four degrees for crispy hoppy beers yeah but you could serve it at six, six if you want to enjoy it get the hoppiness out for most hoppy beers it's going to be six degrees regardless of abv if it's multi but not strong you're probably going to serve it around 10. you could serve it at eight personal preference but 10 is about right car scale temperature mm -hmm. or what car scale should be clean sours i would serve nice and cold six ish make it crispy make it feel like a popsicle nice um mixed firm sours i'd serve eight to ten probably eight to keep that kind of crispiness that sourness really going what you don't want to get out is too much sweetness and you don't want to serve it too cold that you lose the nuance and then you know big stouts barley wines and stuff like that probably about 12 but if it's an american barley wine maybe i'd serve it a bit colder because it's very hoppy right i mean that's that's great and all but I know there are some exceptions to this rule. Yeah, like that barley wine I just said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what other kind of exceptions are there? Like, to me, you know, IPA is such a broad church these days with mm -hmm. many different styles. And like a New England IPA, I find incredibly sweet and a little bit too much to session, too many of them. Should I be drinking that colder? I think if you find that, yeah, you could maybe serve your New England at, at, at four. Um, I think that would definitely be a valid thing to do and that would reduce the sweetness of it. So even if they're quite strong, we could lower the temperature a little bit to yeah. take some of the sweetness. Definitely. Of it. I, think, I think a really great rule would be to always, if in doubt, serve your beer a bit colder than you were thinking. Because A, I think you're going to do less damage that way. Yeah. And B, you can reverse that, right? You can leave yeah. it to warm. Well, that's Once you've thing. opened it, it's yeah. a bit trickier to chill it. Chill I think it there's, there's almost like a nice little story you can have in every glass where you drink it a little bit colder than you maybe thought to start with like you're saying maybe if you're unsure drink it a little bit colder and then as it warms up it might yeah, open yeah. itself out and that's what wine drinkers things. talk about they talk about it opening up as it yeah. as it warms or as it oxidizes and that that definitely happens with beer it's not always a positive thing but no. it is already happening just don't do it with lager just don't yeah don't let you don't <laughs> let your lagers warm up or oxidize that no. so there's another really obvious exception to this yeah. which is a moonway gets a second outing here nice the baltic porter ah uh, not actually a, a porter no not a porter technically a lager yes. as we learned in our what is baltic porter video but if you served a 7.4 percent dark porter that's been lagered yeah at four percent it might be quite tasty but i think you know the 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 other option is to serve it like like a lower abv multi awesome. ale or indeed a higher abv multi it's it's oh, wow. pretty much all three at seven and a half percent and i would probably serve it as if it's a low abv multi beer so although it's, in the middle yeah although it's got a high abv yes you want it a little bit crisper so i mean what i would say is if you're unsure with something like that we've already said you could serve it a little bit colder which is what yeah. we're doing here but you could also apply the abv plus two rule we talked about right yeah so th that would say to serve it at 9.4 so you know car scale temperatures which would also probably work very nicely yeah. but i'd serve it a little bit more chilled I mm. which leads me to my final point which is we've talked about this a lot but most people most pubs most bottle shops they only have one way of serving the beer which is the temperature of the fridge yeah. or of the cellar right so it's pretty rare even to go into a pub and for them to have their beer served at different temperatures a couple of really good mm. bars will do it they'll have like you know like 10 taps that were at four and a couple that were at eight or something like that for yeah them. i certainly don't remember seeing that visibly anywhere no it's made a point and they it. often won't talk about no. it either but you know it does mean that when you go into a pub probably your imperial style is going to be served at uh, between four and six depending on the the cellar and their cooling system so what i would say is if that just proves don't worry about this too much right yeah you're still enjoying beer in pubs and it's all being served at the same temperature unless it's cask but what i would say is if you buy an imperial stout in a pub on draft you could do the thing that you see lots of people doing which is you know cup it swirl it you know get the aromas and stuff and have fun have a little sip see what it's like at that temperature but that beer probably is going to be a lot more tasty in five six minutes time and as uh you know a famous uh brewery once said good things come to those who wait i don't know what brewery you're talking about no idea probably terrible at advertising <laughs> terrible advertising terrible. yeah yeah <laughs> so i hope that's really helped you we've got loads of links that have popped up of all the things that we've been talking about all the stars that we've been talking about like baltic porter so give those a look at the end of this video um and yeah otherwise uh, abv plus two slash diagram hey